Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. I've been doing a lot of Ash Photography Target Tips videos. I hope you guys have been enjoying them, but I'm long overdue for a gear review video. Now I have my mount, I know, I, I've been waiting to do more videos on that. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm waiting for some counterweights to be able to use it a lot more. They're on back order, surprise, surprise. But I was able to pick up a new Ash Photography dedicated camera. You guys know I've been using the ASI 294 MC Pro for the last couple months and I've been loving it. Um, but I am trying to piece together a second rig and I was going to use my DSLR but lo and behold ZWO had a sale and I couldn't resist. So what I did was I picked up another camera and I picked up another ASI Air to run that camera. So what did I get? Well, I got the ASI 533 MC so here's my ASI 294 MC Pro. Here's the ASI 533. You can see they look identical. They feel identical. The only way to tell the difference other than looking at the sensor, which we'll talk about shortly, is to look on the back and make sure that you have the right one. Both are MC Pro, so that means they're color cooled cameras. So neither of these are mono. I'm still shooting in color. Um, and I just wanted to make a video sort of comparing them. Now, I haven't used the 533 for, you know, a long period of time, but I've already picked up some key things that I think can help you guys. If, say, you're thinking about switching from a DSLR to a, a dedicated astrophotography camera, or maybe you already have one or another, or you have the 183 or some other version, and you're looking to pick up a second one or to replace it, uh, I have three key things that I want to talk about in this video to consider. Some differences between the two. And I'll also give a very basic overview. You know me, I'm not big on like super technical things. I'm not the guy to discuss uh, pixel size and all those sort of things. Um, there are lots of videos on YouTube where they explain it much better than I would. But I want to give sort of real practical things. Things that I've noticed out there in the, in the field and in shooting. And as a result, of course, processing as well that might help lean, uh, steer you in one direction or, the net or another when it comes to which camera suits you best, depending on what uh, equipment you're using. So just a very basic overview of the two cameras. Now they're both CMOS sensors, they're both backlit sensors, and as I mentioned, they're both cooled cameras. So they both will provide very good results when it comes to astrophotography. They're both designed for it and will likely, in most cases, will almost always outperform a DSLR. Not bashing DSLRs, of course. I started with one, I used it for a year. I still have mine, but I do, I will say I do enjoy these dedicated astrophotography cameras and uh, I'm really loving using them with the ASI Air. Now, a couple of differences between the two cameras. The ASI 294 MC Pro, uh, I've talked about this in my video where I talked about switching from a DSLR to this particular camera is the sensor. It's a micro four thirds sensor and it measures 19.1 millimeters by 13 millimeters. So it's a rectangular sensor and that's important based on what we're about to talk about. The read noise on this particular sensor is 1.2. We'll talk about that as well in one second, what that really means. Now for the 533, the sensor is a uh, one inch sensor measuring 11.31 millimeters by 11.31 millimeters. So instead of a rectangular sensor, this particular model has a square sensor. And we're going to talk a lot more about that because that's one of my main points uh, of differences between the two cameras. And the read noise on this one, on the 533, is 1.0. So we mentioned it's 1.2 on the 294. On this, it's 1.0. So what's sort of the significance of read noise. Well, the lower the number, the better when it comes to read noise, because read noise is the ability to detect very weak signals. And that's signals that normally, if you had a higher a higher uh, number, say, you know, 1.5 or higher, 1.8, 3.0, that signal would have got lost in the general noise. But with a, a more sensitive sensor, the lower the, the, that number, the more sensitive, it's able to pick up those signals and perhaps even give you more detail in your pictures. So not a huge difference between the two, but the 533 does have a lower read noise. So that's important to keep in mind. And they're both, they both use USB 3.0. So very fast uh, data transfer 
when you take your images to storing them on the memory card and um, so that's always good to have USB 3.0 is definitely better than 2.0 so that's just a very basic overview you can go on Z ZWO's website and you can see all the stats and if you're really into that you know the more detailed information they have everything there and there are other videos that explain uh, pixel size and some of those other things uh, to, into a lot more detail than I would be qualified to do. But let's talk about three key things that I've noticed between the two cameras in my relatively short period of time using them. Now the first one is the sensor size. Okay, So we talked about the, the size of the two and that the 294 has a rectangular sensor and the 533 has a square sensor. Now I'll be honest, when I was first deciding what camera to buy going from my DSLR. Uh, it was kind of between those these two cameras. They're in the same price range. Uh, the 533 is a little bit cheaper, but pretty close, not really a big issue. But that square sensor kind of threw me off a bit. And uh, I kind of, it kind of scared me away and I thought, you know what, let's just stick with the 294. I know a lot of guys were using it and having great success. And I'm very happy with it. But now that I've been using it a little bit the 533 I kind of like the square sensor it's not going to be for everyone and it will depend on your telescope and the kind of things you like to shoot but the the, the square sensor definitely has its place so let me ex explain that briefly if you're like me and you're using pr primarily smaller wide field refractors um, and you're still trying to shoot smaller objects like I often do I'm talking if we're talking I mean galaxies of course that's a whole nother thing all of them except for Andromeda and Triangulum are quite small and they involve a lot of cropping when we try to image them. So those are obvious, but even things like, think of some emission nebula, Pac-Man nebula, the Dumbbell nebula, even the Eagle nebula here, it appears quite big, but it's, you know, on a, the 294, here's a single exposure, you know, it's not exactly taking up the entire frame. There is some room from left to right, okay, width-wise. Um, with the 533, it gives you that nice cropped view that you want when you're when you're going to be cropping anyway. You guys know me; I tend to crop quite a bit. I like to get up as up and close to see as much detail as possible. I don't shoot a lot of really wide field, you know, just a small target there, and a lot of space around it. I prefer to get in close. I like to see the details. That's just my the way I like to shoot, and what I prefer. Some people do like to shoot wide field a lot more. And that's where I'm trying to get with this. With the 294, the good thing is you can do both, right? You can shoot it in more wide field, and you have the always have the option to crop. Yeah, you're gonna ha you're not gonna get quite as uh, zoomed in as you will with the 533, because you are doing more cropping and you lose a little bit of details and quality. But you're able to do both. That's the nice thing. With the 533, you simply can't. You cannot shoot the Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula. Um, with anything other than a really wide field, you know, camera lens, or yeah, basically you have to use a wide field camera lens. It's just the square sensor is not um, the right shape for something like that. So here's my picture of the heart nebula and soul nebula together. I actually tried using the 533 first and it wouldn't fit. I switched to the 294 and it fit perfectly. So there's a perfect example using the same telescope, my little Ascar FMA 180, very wide field, 180 millimeter telescope, but with the 533, they just would both not fit. Here's another example, my Western Veil Nebula. Here's the image. Um, I used my Sharp Star 76 millimeter with the ASI 294MC Pro. If I had used my 533, there's no way I would have been able to get all of that width in there and pick up the whole thing. Maybe if you were to switch to the Red Cat, you know, 250 millimeter uh, focal length compared to 340. But even then, I'm not sure that it would still fit. You see that nice wide rectangular um, sensor is great for stuff like that. Even Andromeda, depending what telescope you're using, might be a little bit tight with the 533. It is sort of depending, again, also depending on uh, the formation of it, which you know, how is it appearing in the sky? Is it straight up and down? Is it on an angle? Is it uh, left, pure left to right? That will determine whether the 533 will work. So with the 533, you may have to, you know, sort of adjust the camera and turn it to make it fit. And as you guys also know about me, I always like to leave room. That's one thing I always say. If you're going to be doing multiple night imaging, give yourself room to play with. 
Um, that being said, I do love the 533 for a lot of the targets I've been shooting lately. Um, I wish I had used it for the Triangulum Galaxy. You guys remember that image in my last video? I actually had it with me, but I was so used to using the 294, I didn't even think to use it. I was kind of kicking myself. But uh, nonetheless, I was happy with the image, but I would have had to crop even less with the 533. So that's something to really keep in mind. What kind of telescope do you use? Are you using mostly wide field telescopes? What kind of things do you like to shoot? Do you like to shoot like the entire Cygnus region? Do you like to shoot uh, wide field things? Do you like to shoot multiple targets? If that's more your style, I think the 294 is going to work better for you. If you like to shoot mostly like me, where it's individual targets, a lot of them somewhat small, the 533 is a good option. Now I have both obviously, and I'm glad I have both because I have that option to use either one, depending on what I'm shooting. But if you're only able to get one, it's something to think about. Think about your what equipment you use, how, how big are your telescopes, and what kind of targets do you like to shoot. So that's the first point. The second one is an important one as well if you're in light pollution like me. You know I talk a lot about narrow uh, the importance of a good narrowband light pollution filter. And my go-to is always the Optolong L Extreme. I love this filter. It makes imaging from the city possible. But with the 294, it does come with a drawback. I've noticed in using the 294, every single image I, I shoot with this filter has some weird, I don't know, artifacts. I don't know what you want to call it. Here's some examples, okay? Here's uh, a few images, single exposures using the 294 MC Pro and this L Extreme filter. Look at every single one of them, particularly on the left side, you see this red smear. And um, the shape is the same in all of them. And no matter where I'm shooting in the sky, north, south, east, west, I get that weird sort of red smear that is a real pain to remove in post processing. As soon as you start uh, stretching the image, it starts to appear, okay? And I, it always bothered me, it was a pain. And I wondered, what was it, what was it? why was it doing that? Um, but I've done a little bit of research and it's a problem. The 294, and for some reason, maybe one of you guys knows and can explain in the comments, the 294 with this L Extreme, they do not play well together. Now, listen, I've shot this one with it. I'm very happy with this image. I've shot a few others uh, as well. I am able to remove it in post-processing, but it's a bit of a pain. Now, with the 533, having used it with the L Extreme, that does not happen at all. I do not get any sort of hint of that red blemish at all. I can't show you some single exposures because I don't want to ruin my upcoming targets. I've, only, I've shot two so far with this 533, but I can promise you there is nothing. The background looks beautiful, okay? Uh, the L Extreme just does its job. It removes the sky gradient without any weird artifacts. So that part I'm loving. If you're gonna be shooting in light pollution and you don't wanna deal with that weird art, those weird artifacts, I don't recommend the 294. Um, you can use another light pollution filter, of course, but if you already own the Extreme and you've spent the money on it, and you don't want to get another one, um, then that's really something to keep in mind. You're going to have to deal with it. I know some others that have to deal with this as well. In fact, to really show you, here's my uh, Andromeda image that I shot. Remember I told you I, in, in that video, I combined the broadband with a little bit of narrowband. Here's the stacked narrowband and just very briefly edited. You see all that red? That's from the filter, okay? It just shows you. Uh, I've always talked about the sacrifice when using a narrowband. Well, there's a lot more of a sacrifice when you use it with the 294. The 533, as I said, I haven't noticed it one bit, and it's so far, processing has been a lot easier using that with a narrowband filter. Now, ha having said that, with the L Pro, right, the broadband filter, I love the 294. Beautiful. The images look great, especially if you have nice skies. No, no issues whatsoever. I haven't used the L Pro with the 533. I don't suspect there's going to be any issues, but... Of course, I'll update this video if there is. I'm hoping to shoot um, a target this coming week or next with the L Pro and the 533. So uh, I'll definitely keep you guys updated on that. But as I mentioned, with the L Pro, no problems. With, with the L Extreme, the 294 definitely has some issues and it's gonna be a little bit more work in post-processing. The last of the three um, things I wanted to mention in particular, in particular in this video is something called Amp Glow. I'm not going to get into detail about what causes amp glow and all that. 
and I'm sure there's videos on that, but with the ASI 294 MC Pro, there's noticeable amp glow. So I'll give you an example. Here's a, here's a dark frame, okay? So this is a frame, uh, an image that we take with the cap on, and it's the same length exposure as whatever you're using for your target, your particular target, and the same temperature and all that, and you take a few of those out at the end of the night, and it helps with processing and it really shows amp glow. You see that sort of light coming in from the side. Now, they are visible in single exposures when it comes to your light frames, your frames of the actual target. But to be honest, it's going to be really hard to show you. Um, you have to really zoom in and it's just you just barely see the spikes of light coming out. Now, the, one of the reasons for that is because I do short exposure astrophotography, at least at the moment. As you guys know, almost all my exposures are one minute, and that's because I'm using a simple star tracker at the moment, and I just can't shoot much longer than that with my star tracker. If you happen to do longer exposures, let's say three, maybe even five minute exposures, that amp glow will be more pronounced, and you will see it in your single exposures. And then when you go to stack everything up, you will also see that amp glow as you stretch the image. It'll start to appear, as I mentioned, most times from the top right, but sometimes you can even see from the bottom and even from the left side. Now I also crop most of my images, so it's really not a problem for me. And I find that the stacking um, with my dark frames and bias frames does sort of remove it for the most part. So I've never really had an issue. It's not something I worry about with the 294. But if, as I mentioned, if you're using longer exposures and you're not cropping your images, it is gonna be something that, again, you're gonna have to work on in post-processing to try to remove. Having said that, with the 533, there is zero amp glow. Uh, none at all, here's a dark frame using the 533. You can see there is zero amp glow. And as I mentioned, my single exposures have looked great so far with the 533. So not a huge deal, but if, as I mentioned, if you are using longer exposures, it is something you're gonna have to deal with. And with the 533, it's something that you don't even need to worry about. So. Another thing to keep in mind, a practical point to consider if you are um, shooting longer exposures. So that's it for this video, guys. Those are three key things. I have to say I love both of these cameras. I'm not disappointed or I don't regret buying either of them. Um, I think going forward when I'm shooting smaller objects, particularly going into galaxy season, I will be using the 533 um, probably primarily. But whenever I am going to do more wide field, a bigger target, um, particularly in broadband, the 294 is the way to go. But I am looking forward to using this 294 more with, uh, with, a, with a camera lens, probably next year, shooting some more wide field. And perhaps I'll be doing some multiple target imaging this winter. I'm thinking maybe Orion along with the Horsehead Nebula, something I've never done before. I'll definitely be using the 294. Uh, for, for images like that. So both are great cameras. I, I really enjoy both of them. Both are, as I mentioned, around the same price point. Um, the 533 is slightly cheaper, but I recommend both of them and uh, I've been having a great time using both of them. So I hope this video helped guys. As I mentioned, if you're looking to switch from a DSLR to uh, an astrophotography dedicated camera, hopefully this video helps in sort of where you're gonna lean towards or if you have one or the other and we're thinking about buying a second one, hopefully this video helps. There's other options, as I mentioned, there's the ASI-183. Um, I mean, if you go on uh, ZDUGO's website, there's a million different cameras. Now, some of them start to get really expensive. And then, of course, there's the mono cameras, but that's a whole other topic and something for the future for me, maybe next year. But hopefully this video helps. Thanks so much, guys. As I mentioned, I have another target coming very soon. One that I've been looking forward to. I, I missed it last year, but I've been one of the most anticipated targets for me personally. And I was finally able to get in. And I was fairly happy with the results and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So I look forward to sharing that with you and so much more. Thanks again, guys. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.